Let's talk about Ho Yoon Jung. You may know her as Squid Games Player 67. I've seen her in a couple of fashion weeks in the past, but the answer for why she's so attractive is actually really quite simple. She's extremely symmetric, more so than most models, with a masculine facial width to height ratio. In other words, her face is very short and wide with a mix of neotenous or juvenile and dimorphic features and above average dentofacial growth. In short, she fits Western ideals of female beauty more so than the Eastern ones, and I'll explain what I mean by that in just a bit. If you're new to the channel, we break down beauty in a more scientific way using research literature, so strap in, I'm going to explain why each of these points contributes to her unique but quite intimidating look and why in Squid Game, her look worked so well in depicting a cutthroat rogue character. To start off her analysis, let's talk about symmetry. Symmetry is important in modeling for a number of reasons. From an evolutionary psychology point of view, researchers such as Gillian Rhodes have identified it as one of the fundamentals of an attractive face. A symmetric face is an indicator of strong genetic health, but more importantly, a symmetric face is one that's free of any malocclusions, malformations, or disruptions like cleft palate, which link back to poor genetic health indicators, as we've covered in our full breakdown on the different types of symmetry over here. The symmetry component is also partially influenced by your upbringing. Healthy dentofacial development is influenced by the diet that you eat, and as we've covered previously, 75% of asymmetries occur in the lower jaw, unsurprisingly because it's subject to a lot of uneven forces from all directions as you start chewing hard and soft foods. So having symmetry is a double benefit, it indicates strong nature and nurture qualities that you would want to pass on to your offspring. From personal experience in the modeling industry, symmetry is really important for frontal shots, which is much more important in print and editorial, not so much for runway because in fashion and runway, you're going to be gone in a second, so nobody's really assessing your symmetry while you're walking on a runway. Mastering the perfectly symmetrical dead-on look is also very difficult because a lot of models, minor eyelid asymmetry or jaw asymmetries are very common. So having a perfectly symmetrical face, even in a group of some of the most symmetrical faces on the planet, is a big factor in looking strikingly different. Oyeon also has an unusual facial dimension. Unusual in the sense that it deviates from the Korean beauty standard of thin, narrow, and tall face shapes, in other words the oval face shape, as we've covered in our East Asian beauty standards video. Her face is actually more masculine with increased malar or cheekbone prominence, which funnily enough is something that many East Asians get reduced in what's known as malar reduction surgery to achieve a narrower face and that oval face shape. An oval face shape increases impressions of trust and femininity at first glance, whereas her facial dimensions have quite the opposite effect. So despite not fitting the Korean or East Asian standards in theory, her features fit very strongly with beauty preferences in the West for female models, most of which, if you'll notice, have wide and more masculine appearing faces with greater dentofacial protrusion. This very characteristic of a wide but short face has been identified in the research literature as far back as the late 1980s as having a high facial width to height ratio, which is a masculinizing feature that makes the face seem much more intimidating. However, instead of using the traditional facial width to height ratio, a facial index ratio is better at showing what I mean, as the facial width to height ratio is more concerned about the dimensions of the mid face, and the facial index considers the dimensions of the face as a whole. Having a wide face not only stretches the cheekbones out to have greater malar prominence, but also stretches the eyes out to look narrower and wider, assuming that the face has healthy and proportional dentofacial development without any hypotellarism or other abnormalities. Researchers such as Geniol et al. have identified that higher facial width to height ratios make faces appear much more untrustworthy, but also intimidating, which is exactly how Ho Yun was portrayed through Player 67. As you can imagine, this makes the face intimidating, much like the eyes of a jaguar or some other predator, an idea which we've covered in our analysis of another model, Jordan Barrett, with an equally wide and intimidating face. I feel as if at this point I've covered everything on the channel for you guys to just come up with your own analysis. Quite recently on the podcast, I spoke about the concept of averaged faces. In other words, a composite of many faces together looks better than an individual face on its own. However, the most attractive faces actually deviate away from the averaged faces. 
Pay attention to the wording there. This is because the most attractive models, particularly women, have above average dentofacial protrusion as identified by Peck and Peck 1970. This is a concept that I've never actually talked about explicitly, but have hinted at in the past and perhaps you've noticed this yourself when looking at female models in their castings. Most western models have very defined dentofacial features and jaw sizes and dimensions that can almost rival their male counterparts. In the east, model selections are much more cute and soft with less protrusive dentofacial features and this is simply because of different beauty standards. Hoyun falls into the former category, giving her that dominating and intimidating look but with a number of soft and neotenous facial features that can still make her appear quite feminine. Most women, on average, will have less defined jaws and forward protrusive dentofacial growth than their male counterparts, that's just how it is. However, those that do not produce more striking and intimidating faces that Westerners tend to find more attractive. From Peck's paper, Miss Massachusetts 1964 on the top right, and virtually all of the other beauty pageant winners all have very wide faces with relatively narrow and masculine eyes. This isn't to say that they're more attractive than narrower oval shaped faces and rounded feminine eyes that you'd see in the east, but this is an American beauty standard with a preference for masculine dentofacial structures and wide bizygomatic width. All of these faces have very defined inferior mandible borders or jawlines and protrusive lower jaws that line up with the glabella or the base of the forehead indicating a normally projected jaw. Women typically tend to have more retrusive jaws that fall just a bit short of this line, but not these exceptional examples which are considered some of the most attractive women for their time. Having a more retrusive jaw like the average woman is expected to have makes the jawline appear less defined as the skin and soft tissue is not stretched as tightly or tautly and makes the face appear a lot softer, less intimidating, more submissive, albeit a bit more feminine too. On the contrary, above average faces have longer mandibles, oftentimes with greater gonial width or jaw width for both men and women, which is why the likes of Margaret Robbie to Ho Yoon, despite her being a Korean actor and model, so a not Caucasian like in these examples, are so captivating to a western audience. Peck's paper defines facial harmony as an orderly and logical flow of facial features, which is a very subjective term. Personally, at Coves, we define harmony using proportion tests for our facial aesthetic reports, some of which we've actually covered here, but looking at Hoyun's side profile, it's very clear to see that her orthodontic profile has a very pleasing balance with her soft tissue profile. In other words, one particular facial feature does not dominate over the others, such as a prognathic or protruding jaw. Lastly, her face has a lot of neotenous features, which is why it's softer and rounder than typical models. Facial neoteny refers to the presence of juvenile features that influence the way that that face is perceived. More babyish faces with juvenile features, such as a youthful hairline with no frontotemporal recession or a high hairline and rounded forehead, may be taken less seriously and are obviously less intimidating, which is not what we want for her role in Squid Game. Buckle fat is informally referred to as baby fat as the volume loss in this region is one of the more notable signs of an aging or maturing face. You can also get it surgically removed early on to give yourself a less neotenous face like many celebrities and models do, but to be fair I don't actually know if Margaret Robbie had the surgery done or she just aged naturally and gracefully in this example. Maybe you've noticed it for yourself as Julie Bowen's cheeks go from soft and puffy to gaunt and sharp 11 seasons later for Modern Family. In Squid Game, her buckle fat appears to be a lot less and this could be a combination of camera angles, weight loss, high contrast and colour grading in post-production, or what I would guess is a little bit of dehydration, which gives the cheek a hollower, almost starved look as the malar eminences or the cheekbones really start to pop. Obviously this is a mature facial trait, the opposite of a neotenous facial feature, and we take number 67 a lot more seriously as a result. Compare this to her companion, number 240, who is not only portrayed as a smaller, frailer girl with more neotenous and girlish features than, well, spoiler. We don't really expect her to do any of the cutthroat things that Sebyok does, and true to her character, she is a very passive person. These casting decisions are very deliberate and complement the camera angles and acting personas that have been written up by the writers for every single character. When an actor is said to have the look that these casting directors are going for, these are the factors that these directors actually consider. Although a lot more subconsciously, I'm sure they're not calculating facial width to height ratios and comparing them to cephalometric standards. 
So hopefully that clears up your burning questions of why Hoyun is so attractive, especially why the West is all of a sudden smitten by a model and new actor they would have never heard of before. Her on-screen persona as a dominant and capable woman also adds to the appeal and we've covered this on-screen influence in virtually every analysis of a celebrity, especially in the Ryan Gosling analysis. But understand that the way she is portrayed in Squid Game is certainly not how she looks in reality. The lack of sleep, starved and tired look in a sense adds to her attractiveness as a dangerous and alluring persona, but a lot of these episodes play up this side of her facial appeal, especially with the example of her buckle fat and that dehydrated look in the series with diffuse lighting to appear mature and serious. Compare this to when she's walking at a runway under harsh lighting which makes her look a lot more rounded and juvenile. If you would like to get your facial aesthetic scientifically analyzed by our ace team of doctors and aestheticians, much like we did in this video, then look no further than the Coos Aesthetic Report, where you can get your tailored analysis over at our website and get surgical and non-surgical feedback on where you can improve, how this affects the way you look through Photoshop morphs and learn how to emphasize your best features. As always, if you've enjoyed the video, please do like and subscribe and you can always leave your suggestions down in the comments below. Or oh, also check out the r slash studio subreddit. I actually read that a lot more than I read the comments to be fair.